talk a little bit about soldering. Well, first thing I'm going to say about soldering is you need to start with a decent soldering iron. I remember when I first got started, I didn't understand the importance of having a tinned soldering tip. And let me explain what that means here. This is just an El Cheapo soldering iron that you can probably pick up for about $10. And while it's useful, there's one problem with it. For starters, it's very hard to solder with because it doesn't have a tinned tip. And let me explain what a tinned tip is. When I apply solder to the tip of this soldering iron here, you notice that it falls right off. Falls right off onto my wet sponge there. Nothing sticks. And that's not a good thing. You actually want a little bit of solder to stick to the tip of your iron. And part of the reason it falls right off here is because this is not an expensive iron. It's got a copper tip. It doesn't have a silver plate on it. The better soldering irons have a little silver plate on them. So you can put solder on the tip and it sticks. You can see it doesn't roll right off. Of course I can shake it off like that, but it's very useful to have a soldering iron tip where the, some of the solder actually stays on the tip. And from time to time you need to clean it when you're using it. Like you have a wet sponge here, you can just kind of take it and roll it in your sponge a couple times, give it a couple taps, and you're ready to solder with. Um, soldering irons also have different sized tips. Sometimes you're going to do some real fine soldering and you're going to want to use a tip, something like this. Hopefully that's showing up in the camera. If you do have one of these cheap soldering irons, you can still use it. I'll just uh, explain what you have to do here to, to make it usable. For starters, once, once these tips on these cheap soldering irons become oxidized, solder won't stick to them, like I said. The solder just rolls right off. So what you need to do is take some sandpaper and just kind of roll it, pull your soldering iron back and forth across the sandpaper a few times. And uh, right after you do that, quickly apply solder as quickly as you can. And now that you've got some of the copper exposed, you notice the solder actually sticks on there a little bit. I still need to do it a little bit better, but... Um, you can see it definitely helps. Now you you would never want to solder the tip of a good iron like this one here with a silver plate. If you soldered this expensive tip here, you'd ruin it. In fact, some of these tips are very expensive. I paid, I think it was about $22 for some of these tips. Like this one here, it's got a silver coating on the tip of it. You would definitely not want to sand something like this. But if you've got a cheap copper tip, uh, there's no harm in sanding it. In fact, it's kind of a must if you're going to use it. Um, the other thing to consider if you can afford a temperature regulated soldering iron, they're useful like this Weller I have here. There are other good brands that are out there besides the Weller, but a soldering iron like this, I think these go for around $60, $80, something like that. And if you do a lot of soldering, in my opinion, it's worth it. Now a lot of times I'll be doing a soldering that requires so much heat that I'll have to use what they call a soldering gun. A soldering gun is rated in what they call a watts. This one, for example, it's, uh, oh, what is it? Well, you know, it doesn't say. Usually, I think they're around three, 300 watts. They'll have two different settings, depending on how far you pull in the trigger. But this is where you, you need an awful lot of heat. The other thing you need to know, there's some metals that simply you can't solder. Um, for example, I remember trying to solder coat hangers. Darn near impossible to solder coat hangers together for two reasons. Number one, it's not the kind of metal that solder will stick to. Number two, uh, whatever you solder has to be a clean surface before you can solder it. And another little trick, this is more important in the old days than it is nowadays, but there's a stuff you use called solder flux. Let's say you're going to solder onto a piece of wire like this here, or even plumbers use this stuff to help the solder stick to the copper pipes they're soldering. If you put a little flux on the surface before you solder, it'll stick a whole lot better. Also, the surface needs to be clean, so sometimes you might have to sandpaper the surface if it's oxidized. You can see the solder's stuck on there just fine. But you probably won't have to worry too much about adding flux nowadays because most of the solders you buy are what they call flux core. They have the solder, or I'm sorry, the flux already inside of the solder. So just make sure you buy a good solder uh, when, you, when you buy it. Uh, preferably not something too thick to where it's hard to use. For example, you wouldn't want to do electronic soldering with something this thick. Uh, the other thing you want to be aware of is there are different types of solder. This, for example, this is called an acid core solder. This is the kind of solder you might use on a car radiator or something along that line. If you use acid core on electronics, you're going to be sorry because what will happen is it will leave an acid residue and it will actually start to uh, eat into the circuitry.
So you never want to use acid coarse solder. Uh, definitely you want to stick with rosin coarse solder. And like I said, something that has a rosin already inside of the center of the core of the solder. Uh, the other thing you run into a lot in electronics is uh, the need to remove solder. Now there are different tools out there you can use to do that. One of my favorites is this wire wick stuff here. For example, if I was going to use this wire wick, I should have a circuit board. Let me just grab a circuit board right here. Let's say I wanted to remove some solder from the circuit board here. Let me move the light down here. And uh, let's say this, this here, for example, here's a tuner. Let's say I wanted to unsolder this tuner. I simply take this wire wick, I hold it right up against the terminal I want to pull the solder off of, and I don't know if the camera is catching that, but you can see it actually pulls the solder right off of the board. And it does a great job. And um, there are certain situations where it's hard to get the solder off, for example, on a flyback terminal like you've got here. I find that sometimes it's hard to get enough heat to adequately get all the solder to come off the uh, terminal. And sometimes what I'll find with these high temperature solders they're using nowadays, it actually helps to add a little solder to your iron before you try to unsolder, believe it or not. By adding a little solder and then touching the surface you want to unsolder, then, I'm sorry, doing it with the wire wick, you can see it pulls up the uh, solder pretty good there. Again, I don't know if my camera's picking that up. Uh, another tool I've used on occasion, is, it, this is a solder sucker that, uh, well, I, I made part of it myself. It's actually a Radio Shack device that uh, it can be extremely useful when you're trying to unsolder things. The way it works, it's similar to a soldering iron. You plug this in the wall, and this is sort of like a, oh, how do I describe it? I don't know if you can see how that works. When you pull this button, this thing flies out, and it creates a vacuum here, and it pulls the solder off the board. Now these work, but I'm not very fond of these. I find that often when I use them, they, they're very time consuming. They'll sort of scatter the solder around and sometimes you get a little solder bead in places you don't want it to go. Um, there are some situations where you'll need a great big soldering iron. In fact, I was going to show you this antique one I picked up the other day. What did I do with that thing? Well, maybe I'll have to dig it up some other time. But there are certain times you'll need an awful lot of heat for soldering. In that case, I'll just use a propane torch with a big copper tip. Um, I don't never, I never have to use that in electronics, but uh, there are certain applications where you'll need a, a tremendous amount of heat. For example, if you were to try to solder something like this, first of all, solder won't stick to this kind of metal. Secondly, this is such a large piece of metal, you'd never get it hot enough to get solder to stick to it using a gun or an iron. In a case like this, if it, if it were the type of metal you could solder, you'd have to use a torch to get enough heat. So, gosh, oh, one more thing. Um, there's a technique I use to unsolder integrated circuits that are too small uh, to do. But why don't you, I'll tell you what, why don't you pause that camera for a second. And, yeah, go ahead and stop it. Okay, now as far as soldering goes, there are a few tricks you want to know there too. Um, when you're adding your solder you want to do it as quickly as possible but you want to make sure it flows adequately. If you were to um, not get adequate flow you wouldn't have a good connection. The other thing you don't want to overheat your connection. If I would just, just sit here and hold my soldering iron, here, soldering iron on here forever not only does it um, harm the connection a little bit but you can damage a component. You don't know where that heat's going to travel, like if you're tra uh, soldering in a transistor, for example. You don't want to overextend uh, the time that your iron is on the terminal you're soldering. So the main thing is just do it for a while and you get the hang of it. I realized earlier in this video I made the mistake and I said something about... Um, I didn't say something right. One, tip, one point I want to emphasize again is don't ever sand the tip of a... Um, of a silver plated soldering iron. These are expensive tips in your RECA. And you will have to send the tips of the cheap soldering irons. I guess that's good enough.